Hello there and welcome to Bow Beats and a review of the new Yamaha Mod X synthesizer. The Mod X is a massive synthesizer with 192 polyphony, 16 parts, and you can definitely call it a mid-range version of their flagship, the Montage. A massive synth requires a massive review, so in this video I'll go over the basic features, what it sounds like, how you can use the synth engines, we'll go over the motion control, I'll also talk a little bit about the computer integration and give you some pros some cons and talk about alternative products that you might want to check out as well. But first let's listen to what the Mod X sounds like. The Mod X has a huge polyphony count, 192 total polyphony, and for sample playback there is 128 notes, and for the FM engine there is 64 note polyphony. Now on the Mod X you work from a performance. A performance can consist of one part up to 16 parts. Parts are sounds or voices. They can be layered, they can be split across the keyboard, or 16 sounds could be sequenced as individual tracks from an external sequencer. A single part or voice is very powerful. It has a filter section with 18 filter types, 9 LFOs, pitch amp and filter envelopes, a 3 band EQ and 2 insert effects. And for the FM engine there is 8 operators, 88 algorithms and 7 spectral forms, that is waveforms. But there is more to it. Each part or voice is based on 8 elements, that is 8 oscillators. So for a sample based part you have 8 samples to pick from and combine to create that one voice. And for an FM voice you have 8 operators that you can use to shape your sound. And talking physical appearance, we have a lot of hands on control. It is slimmed down from the montage, but we still have four rotor encoders that are assignable and we still have four faders. And it still sports the super knob to which you can assign over a hundred parameters. And then there's the screen, which is a touch screen and it's easily readable. And not to forget, this synthesizer also works as an audio interface. You can hook it up to a computer via USB or an iPad for example and you can get two inputs and ten outputs out of this unit. It's a little less than on the montage but it still works really nicely. I've used it with Cubase without any problems and I'll talk a little bit more about this later in the video. So how do you make sense of this massive synthesizer? Well, let me just start by playing one voice. And this is one voice here, 
that I created myself that is using six elements, so six samples. Uh, let me just show you what it sounds like. <laughs> So a little bit cheesy there with the choir stuff, but I think it goes to show that you can do a lot with just one voice. And of course, I've just had this for a couple of weeks, so it's not really representative of the entire depth. So what's going on in this sound here? Well, it's just six elements, six samples that I'm using. Uh, this one is the most, uh, I think, the one you notice the most. And if we go to element six here, you have this one. And if we go to element four. And element three. Element two. And element one. And all together. When you're in a sample based synth sound, you have LFOs per element. So each element here has an assignable LFO that you can assign, for example, to pitch mod, filter mod, and amp mod. And you have uh, three different waveforms here, saw, triangle, and square. So th this is on an element level. Are you confused yet? There's also element EQ. You can, per element, set the amplitude, uh, amp EG, you have scale, you have a filter, you have a filter EG, pitch EG, on an element level. Now, if we go into common here, we have the settings for the entire sound, the entire voice. So we have general settings, pitch settings, we have effects where we have routings, the two different insert effects, the EQ. Uh, so there's a three band and two band EQ for the entire voice. You can set an arpeggio, you can do motion sequencing, and you can set different control parameters. So there's a ton of things going on. So there's even a part LFO here that you can see. So we have the eight individual LFOs for the eight samples, and then we have the part LFO that you can use for the entire sound. So there's a ton of things going on, a ton of depth to just making one sound, and you can have 16 of them. So that's pretty cool. So one way to understand the synth is by creating a new performance. So we'll go to category search. Here you have all the preset sounds. So there's a ton of cool sounds to play with, but we're going to create our own. So we'll go to init, and here you can choose from uh, AWM2 patch. So that's an in initialized sample-based patch. You have the FMX patch, you initialize the drum on multi-GM. But the two we're going to check out is the AWM2 and the FMX. So we start with the sample-based patch. So if you press the home button, this is what you'll see. And what you have here are the different slots for the different parts. Here we have our first part. To edit it, we click here, click edit, and now we can see the elements, eight elements, we have the common part, and what we want to do now is want to pick a sound. So let's see here. And we pick sound over here, and I want something from the synth lead category. So here we have standard sort of uh, oscillators. So on the element level, we can now change, for example, the filter here. So let's go in here, and here we have plenty of filter types to choose from. Let's go for a pretty standard low pass filter. Next up, I want to apply some LFO to the filter. Some slow LFO. 
And I've also changed it so that the higher up I play, the more the filter cuts off. So we can go to Amplitude, Amp-AG, add some attack and some release here as well. Now I'd like something on top of this, which is a little bit more, um, how do you say, a little bit more brittle, I'd say. So going to the second element here, we turn it on and we try and find something that sounds cool. So I want to add this Digivox, but it doesn't sound that good. So what I want to do is I'm applying LFO to pitch, filter and mod to just give it a little bit more movement. But I don't want it playing on the lower notes. So we go to note limit here and we'll set the lowest note here and we'll set it to C3 here. This means that I'll only have the one sound playing the bass. Next up I want to introduce a more classic sound. So instead of going for uh, say a synth sound, we'll be going for some kind of pad or choir sound because I'm cheesy that way. So we've got this little wow sample there and I think I want to set a note limit here as well so I don't play it on the lowest notes. C3 as well and with the addition of some LFO we have a sound like this. So let's recap, we have the three elements that are sample-based synth sounds and each of the elements have setting for the sound itself. You have pitch EG, filter, amplitude, element, LFO and you have element EQ. So let's go to the common settings here and let's apply some effects. So we can check the routings, here you can see how everything is being routed here. And we can go to insert A here. Now let's apply something. So I'm thinking just a simple reverb here. So let's go for hall reverb. So you can see we have lots of different effects here. Reverbs, delays, choruses, flangers, phasers, trembles, distortion, compressions, and so on. But let's go for some kind of chorus here. As you can see, we have all the settings for this particular chorus, LFO speeds, the depth, uh, feedback, dry and wet. So we have created one voice featuring three different samples. Now we can also, of course, edit the entire performance here. So here we are in the performance edit. And here we have general settings. You can set the audio in if you have something coming into it. You can set motion sequencing, controls, effects, USB monitor. So under effects here, we can see the main effects on this sound here. So what I want to do here is I want to add the multiband compressor. And of course we can set the EQ, we can set the different parameters for the multiband compressor, we can edit the reverb. So there's a ton of things that we can affect here on this top level. Next up, I want to add another voice. So press the plus button there, go in it, and I want to add an FM voice. There we go. And I'm going to mute the first sound for now. So here we have the FM voice and it's being sent to the master reverb as well. By default, we can let that stand. And what I want to do is actually, I want to apply some kind of arpeggio to what's going on with the first sound. So what we're first going to do here, this is the, the common part. So the settings for the entire sound. And here we go to arpeggio, we go to individual. And in many cases, when you press something like this, you get this little menu here. This is where you search for a sound or a preset, for example. So I'm just going to go for something standard. So I'm going piano, general. So I picked an arpeggio here. That I think will match what's going on with sound number one. So next up, let's choose an algorithm. Now, honestly, I am not very good at FM synthesis. But as you can see here, you can just scroll here through different algorithms. So we'll pick one. I'm not entirely sure how this will work, but yeah. That's the fun thing with FM. You can really experiment a lot with it. I think that you don't necessarily need to know 
a lot to make a decent sound. It is very much something hands-on. And you can actually use the faders here on the unit itself to control the operator levels. So that way you can actually mix between the different operators on the fly, which is also very cool. And as I said earlier, we have seven different waveforms. <laughs> And you can actually use this skirt here to change the sound of them. So something like this sounds pretty cool. So now that we have a little sound here, let's go into the common and let's work with the filter here, filter type. So at the moment there's no filter applied. Let's apply some. And let's add some filter attack here and decay. And let's go to effects. And at the moment there's nothing going on. What should we go for phaser maybe? So let's try the two sounds together. So here we have it, two different voices, one using an arpeggiator, both with multiple layers of oscillators. I think I'm using three oscillators or three operators on the FM patch, and I'm using three samples on the sample-based patch. And I have also applied some insert effects on both sounds, and I'm using some master effects as well. So this should give you an idea of how versatile this sound engine is. <laughs> The second thing I wanted to show you how to set up is setting up the motion control and using the super knob. But let's be honest, I can't do it justice in a review. This is super deep and you can control hundreds of parameters. And also I'm sort of a beginner with this synth. So I think what I want to do now is I want to set up some kind of, um, some kind of automation here for the first sound. So we click it, go to edit. Now we can go here to the menu and we go to motion sequencer. Now. There are different ways of setting this up and I will just show you how to use the lanes. So we click lane, we click on. This gives us a motion sequence lane. It's sort of like a step editor or an LFO. Yeah, somewhere in between. I don't think it exactly operates as an LFO, but you can think of it as a super advanced LFO. And we can actually load a sequence here. 
we can load a preset. Uh, let's go for something a big triangle. Now you see that this little waveform here changed. And we can actually go into this waveform and we can change it as well. So you can change the way that this little sequence here operates. And you can reverse it and do a number of different things here. So let's go back. We can also set the speed or we can sync it to beat or arpeggiator or tempo. So we're going to sync it to tempo for, for this little experiment here. Now the motion control still doesn't do anything. So we have to go into mod control. Here we have the LFO, for example, for uh, this entire voice. We have the control assign. For example, we have the mod wheel here. We can assign it to something, but let's go for motion sequencer lane number one. And now we can set destinations for motion sequence lane number one. And there's just a ton of destinations. We can, for example, influence the different insert effects or part parameters. So let's see here. Let's see if we can apply it to element and cut off. So here's the sound with the motion sequencer. So now I've set it up so that destination one is the cutoff of all the different elements. So you could basically turn these on and off in order to just affect one element. Now let's add some more here. Next here, I think we're going for, yeah, insert effect B and the feedback level. And number three here is element pan. And as you see, when I hit this, it actually recalls a previous setting that I had, but I had to reshoot parts of the video because the camera died. And as you can see, if I add a fourth one, we can actually move over to page two. There are four pages in total and four destinations per page per motion sequencer. So now we have this sequence here controlling three parameters. <laughs> And now we can, of course, go back and go to our little FM patch here, press edit, go to the common page, go to motion sequencer. We can go to lane, turn on lane number one here, load a sequence using just a preset here. It looks like this. And we can use this to control something on the second sound, the FM sound that we have here. So let's see here, control assign, motion sequence lane one. And let's see here. And just as before, instead of elements parameters, we have the FM parameters. And here you can change all the parameters on all the eight operators at once, or you can just select a few of the operators to impact. So let's see here. And to show this, I'll solo the sound. So here's the sound without anything going on. Let's add something, let's add cutoff, let's have skirt, and let's add insert effect A and the feedback. It just creates a little bit of movement, and if we play them together, it'll sound something like this. Now another thing you can do is you can assign this big knob here, this super knob. This is meant to control different parameters and I think you can control up to about 128 different parameters just using one knob here. So we're going to set it up so that it controls the performance. So we're not on the part level controlling an individual voice. Instead, I want to go here to the sound, I want to press edit and I want to use the motion sequencer here. So press the performance, press edit, and now we can go to control. And here we can use auto select. So I'm going to use auto select here, turning the super knob. It identifies the super knob. And now we can add stuff. So for example, we have a ton of different things we can affect here. We can affect the different parts, for example. So let's see here, for example, let's pick part two here. That's the FM synth, part one assign. And here we can see source, assign knob one, part two, assign. So now we've selected so that the super knob here will affect 
assignable knob number one. So this shows how deep this modulation is because now we're using the super knob to control another knob and it's the one over here. It's the number one here. Uh, it's called part two assign one. So it's the first assignable knob for part number two. And that is in turn set to volume. Now we have to set it to bi-directional. So now if I turn down this here, you can see here, I'm turning assignable knob number one here. It's going up and down. Now we should only hear part one. That's true. Now if we use the super knob, we can bring in part number two. And the super knob can also be assigned to say a pedal so you could control the volume of the second part with a foot pedal, for example. But of course we're not done. We want to set up the super knob to control something from part number one as well. So we select part one, part one assign, and then we add something here. Now let's see, reverb time, hmm. Probably not, let's see here what we can find. We can set it to resonance instead just to show you how it sounds. So now we're controlling not only the volume mixing between the different sounds, but also the resonance for sound number one or part number one. So this was a basic introduction to the sequencer lanes and the super knob. And as you can see, there's just so much you could do with this. Basically, your creativity sets the limits, and I do think that this makes it a powerful tool for, for sound design, actually. Now, before we go to the next part of this review, let me just save this. You press Store over here, and you press uh, Store as New Performance, and we can call this um, Review. And I just wanted to briefly touch on the computer and iPad integration. So here I have my iPad, I have a little camera connection kit. Let's launch Cubasis. So we have audio here. You can see that the Mod X is recognized here by the iPad. And if we check an audio track here, you can see that we can click here. And we have the 10 inputs from the Mod X here available. So you can stream audio from the Mod X to this unit here. And when it comes to using the Mod X inside of a DAW, it's pretty similar to using it with an iPad. Here I am in Cubase. Let's just go up here and check the connections. So in the VST connections menu, you can see all the 10 inputs, the main left and right from the USB, as well as USB 1 to 8. And these are automatically assigned on the unit itself to different parts, but this can of course be changed. And if we go to outputs, you can see the stereo output here, main left and right. So here's a little arrangement I did using four MIDI tracks corresponding to four parts on the Mod X. So let's go down here and I have a couple of enabled audio tracks and we can just hit record. And as you can see we now have four stereo audio tracks. But what about latency? Let's go and check that out as well. Device setup. Let's go into VST audio system. We have the Mod X. So we have an input latency of 6.2 and an output latency at 4.9. And this is with 128 samples, which I would say makes it a pretty decent latency for this device. <laughs> So what do I think about this synth? Well, firstly, that my review probably didn't do it justice because it's so deep and it's so advanced and I don't have an expert level understanding of it. I've just had it for a couple of weeks. So take my review for what it is. It's my kind of honest attempt at explaining what it is. But let me give you some pros and some cons. So a big pro is that it's very quick and easy to make multi-layered patches on it. 
Another pro is that it has quick hands-on controls with the faders and the knobs and the super knob. It's also very easy to set up. It has a very deep sound engine. The routing possibilities and effects options are great. And I would say that it's quite good for sound design actually, much more so than you might think. Another thing I dig is the large and colorful display on it. And the UI and operating system is actually pretty good. Now it does take a little getting used to, but once you understand the logic, it's very fast to operate. Another pro is that you get a pretty decent audio interface with this synth so if you're looking for your first synth and you have this kind of money to spare this could actually be quite interesting. So what are some cons, some negatives? Well, firstly, if you're used to a modern tablet or a smartphone, the screen on the Mod X will feel a bit sluggish and imprecise. It's very easy to misclick with your finger. And secondly, which is probably a really big downside to it, is that you can actually exchange it for a software synth, something like Omnisphere with a dedicated controller, especially with Omnisphere 2.5. So if you're not all about hardware and if you don't find it appealing, you could be just as well off with a software, a deep software with a big sample based synth engine, for example, like Omnisphere. So that's something to consider, but I do understand the appeal of the hardware. It's very fun and easy to use and, and I know a lot of you guys enjoy hardware since, so might be something to consider. So let's talk alternatives, and there's rarely a good way to do it, so I'm going to go with a different approach. I'm not going to compare it to other synths of this type. Instead, I'm going to compare it to two different types of synths that you maybe should consider as alternatives. Not because they are similar, but because they are dissimilar, and maybe they represent something you want. So the first synth I want to compare with is the Prologue from Korg. It's a big multi-polyphony analog synthesizer and it sounds really good. And here is a big difference to something like the Yamaha. The Yamaha has this clean sound, a ton of options, ton of voices, very, very deep parameter editing, a lot of menus. The Prologue, on the other hand, is very hands-on, has a more raw analog sound. You can mimic it on the Modex or Montage, for example, but it's not exactly the same. This sort of raw tone that you can sculpt with is very different on the Prologue. So that's something to consider as an alternative, depending on what you want. So you can compare sort of the strengths of both these synths to each other, even though they are not similar. Which brings me to the second synth I like to contrast against, and that's the Digitone. And I know they are not the same, they are not even comparable in terms of specs, but both have an FM engine, but they're quite different. Where the Mod X is a little bit more classic, the Digitone has a much more original approach to FM and the way you work it and the way it sounds, at least to my ears. So if you want something slightly more original, a little bit more focused on being a synth with a very deep sequencer, the Digitone could be for you. Or if you want all the features of the Mod X, you should of course go for it. Because who is the Mod X for? Well, it's for somebody who wants the entire package. You have great hands-on control, you have the keyboard, you have the option to bring it on stage, you have a great sample library of sampled sounds, you have great synth sounds, the FM engine. But if you don't want all of it, you should look at something more dedicated, like a Prologue or Digitone. So that's why I wanted to contrast against them. So they are not the same. I'm not, I'm not saying that they are the same. But just think about if you want a, a full package or if you just want something very specific and it should guide you in your purchase. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching this review of the Yamaha Mod X. If you want to, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. I assume that you did if you're still around. And if you want to support future reviews like this, because they do take a ton of time and energy to make, please consider going to patreon.com slash bowbeats. So thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you in the next video. Yeah.
Tappar du din sock nu?